Hi everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Patricia McNeely and I help you to find real love in your life. All kinds of love, self-love and romantic love because I am a firm romantic. So I'm here to help you find that part of yourself that you're really here for and that really helps you just fabulously enjoy life. So let's just get started. Today in this video, I want to talk to you about instant relationship. <laughs> now that's what I call it um, based on how I was years ago, like years and years ago, and I still would, of course, like this. I think other people have this where somehow you really want an instant relationship with each other. You don't want that job interview part of things where you're saying, well, where did you go to school? What did you study in school? Were you a straight A student? Were you a troublemaker? And how you're able to get away from that interview process and get to more of a real relationship. Because you see, this is a memory in us. We've had memories of real intimacy, real relationships, something where someone cares about us, where they're literally into us. How, it, how can it be that everything has gone so far off the track that there's tomes and tomes and tomes written about people chasing the wrong person and then, you know, calling names and all this other stuff? I mean, it's really time to get this stuff on track. There's a number one thing that relationship people talk about, that matchmakers talk about, no matter what culture they're from. And that sometimes even guys talk about, okay? It's inner confidence. Nobody really wants someone who is wishy-washy. Nobody wants to go on a date where, you know, the person just somehow isn't present. They're not even in touch with themselves. That's where I come in because I'm here to help you really get in touch with yourself, clear some of these old patterns. Now, because of what I do, I've actually been privy to seeing a lot of terrible things happen to people. I've seen people somehow believe that someone, because of some list out there, like, you know, some checklist, means that they are stuck with that person and that person becomes the bane of their existence. And if I may say so, that man will be the death of you or that woman will be the death of you because they are so toxic for you. And they may not be physically abusive. They could be doing other things that are other types of abuse. They're restricting your life. And it's just no fun. How about another thing? People that have been married and you have kids. And this is really hard because you want someone that could be normal with your kids that you can trust with your kids. There's far too many stories out there of, you know, the one parent goes off to the store, trusts someone to stay with their kids and they somehow do something terrible. And we have to get away from these things. We have to actually be at a level where these things sort of become a non-issue for you and also a non-issue for society in general. Now, what about actual fun? I talk to a lot of people who are not having fun in their life. They're not having fun. They forgot how to play. And I don't know what happens as people become adults, but the minute people become of drinking age or driving age, suddenly it becomes about carousing and promiscuity. And like, yeah, people, you know, they stick their toe in that. But when it continues for years, you're kind of scratching your head and saying, there's some immaturity here. Why do they still need to look at another woman? Or why do they still need to look at another man? Or why can't they commit to a relationship? They have more bro time than, you know, I think is normal. They'd rather go play with their rubber ducky than be mature and do things as a proper adult, right? So this is stuff that happens. Now, there's other really negative things that happen. People uh, winding up getting into so much drama that the police get called, the neighbors call the police, and for some reason there's some weird rationale in the head that says something like, we're entitled. All that has happened is those people have locked horns. They are like two rams who have butted heads so hard 
that their horns are locked together. They are locked in a conflict. That's not love. Okay, let's get real about this because there is so much out there where people could say, well, but I love them. And it's like, no, you have no idea what you're talking about. Your head is stuck in the mush. You can't sense, you can't feel. You have been doing it so long. Okay, like it's time to really raise the bar. The bar is being raised on purpose because nobody can really afford to live there. We cannot afford the collateral damage of drama. We cannot, children cannot, they have nowhere to escape to. Think about it, if you were a child of your parents' drama, your parents' infidelities, your parents' addictions, that's a lot of stuff. And then you're expected to somehow grow up and have a normal relationship. There's no living example for you. We're here to be the living examples and exemplify this and really, you know, not just raise the bar, enjoy it. So let's talk about instant relationship. What is instant relationship? Instant relationship is where you have someone who gets you. Now, I have had someone who not only got me, but we had the greatest time. We met at a line. It was after a parade. We had a good time and it just came and went. What do you do about those relationships where it's like a 24 hour most fabulous date ever, but it doesn't last? I know all about that. And it's something that's not meant to last for various reasons. You can't force it. You can't make it work. You can't, you know, keep trying to go there and like restart the engine. Do -do 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 -do. But that's when people's heads will come out and, you know, um, I found a level of acceptance oddly with that, but um, the other person also shared that he had gone into some sort of state of agoraphobia, which is a fear of open spaces. Little did I know. And I wasn't exactly getting ghosted, but um, there were a lot of learning curves there about things. What about people that pre-drink because they have so much anxiety about even talking to the opposite sex that they go out and they get hammered or they get hammered the night before and they're hungover. You're not getting a true version of the person. That's another tactic people use because they're so scared. They want to be with someone. So, I mean, we got to really break down these old patterns. There's a lot of weird, but, you know, some of it's harmless, but a lot of weird kind of mental gobbledygook. This is not uh, be, be very promising as the way to start a new relationship. Instant relationship makes you feel like you're already having a relationship. There's some awareness. There's um, somehow some sense of knowing. Now, I have had that with my ex. Um, before the divorce, I used to say, feels like I've known you for 20 years. Now, there was a finite time. Turns out, yeah, that was just someone where the feeling of knowing them before was actually very valid. So in order to help you, I've created this book, Real Love. And this is a practical book to help you. There are six activity exercises in here. There are specifics about what if you have recently broken up a relationship or you're not even sure if you're broken up, what to do about that. How do you get your emotional state of being back into shape so that you have a genuine, real good, chance of meeting someone who's really good for you, okay? You're not intended to stay in depression, but for some people, depression can linger. Just add alcohol, it'll linger even longer. It lasts and lasts. I don't recommend it. Don't lower your vibe with drugs and alcohol. What else is in my book? Well, there are things to do so that you really get in touch with your discernment. And that is a key factor because if you cannot discern, if you can't tell up from down, if you're starting to get confused, you may be the victim of someone else's uh, ability to keep you off balance, which isn't exactly narcissism. Sometimes a combination of you're too much of a people pleaser. You can't say no. You can't set boundaries. How would you like it if your own soul was involved to not only help you set boundaries, but to really attract and draw someone who is real and genuine into your life. 
and probably good looking and talented and gifted and all the other stuff, right? Because as you raise your vibe, you get a little better specimen of who you want to um, date and see and get involved with out there, okay? So I highly recommend my book. The link is below. If you would like to get the book for free and join my class, my class is coming up June 13th. That's Sunday morning. We are meeting three times. We are going to go through the activities. I open the floor for questions and answers, and we really get in deep. So bring your questions because I'm a talker and I like to help people. That is one of my driving things. I like to talk to people and help people. And this is the way I like to do it, is to be practical. I feel it's going to be a lovely world if a lot of people are actually feeling the vibe of love and not feeling nervous or anxious. And I'm able to help you even discern what is that anxiety, because is it social anxiety? Is it something clinical? Is it is it high blood pressure? You know, like there's a couple of things that could actually be. I'm an intuitive that can help you with these things. So reach out. The links are below. Have a great day and hope to see you soon. Bye.